Hello friends, thank you for joining us again for another exciting Bible study, God's Word Alive. His Word is alive. Yes, it it's is. It's alive and active. Yes. Uh, I've got I've got a couple friends joining me tonight. Now you might have remembered Wendy, she joined us here, oh, not long ago, uh, but I don't think you met Shelby before. Shelby is a dear friend of mine, that loves Amen. the Lord with all his heart, and I was so excited when he said that he could be part of our team tonight. Amen. We're going to be talking about the subject of faith. You know, that's pretty. That's a pretty big thing in God's economy, it is, right? It is. It, it's your ticket to eternal so, life. We're so saved through our faith. We're going to look at so, that in Scripture here in just a minute. But before we dive off, do we have any housekeeping, Wendy, you yes. want to share? Well, we want to encourage everyone to participate, and you can do that in a couple of ways. You can go on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, you can participate through the comments. And then if you would like to text prayer requests or comments, you can text that to 479-220-7107. Again, that's 479-220-7107. So we love your participation and especially uh, send us your prayer requests so we can pray for them. At that's the right. Amen. You know, it, it, it'll make it a really that much more of a study if you get involved and send in those comments. It, it really always yes. helps out. Amen. So you, we're all one big family here. And we're, we're just trying to seek. We're just wanting to make it, right? Every one of Amen. us. Amen. And family so, that study together grows together. That's right. Yes. <laughs> family yeah. of God. Absolutely. Uh, so we have prayer for us? Yes. Okay. Dear most wonderful Father, Lord God, we thank you so much for this time that we can come together and study your word, Father. We ask that you will be here with us. We feel that your presence is here, and we ask that... Uh, your word just enlighten all of us and that we all can grow and prepare for the kingdom to come. I pray this in your son Jesus name. Amen. 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 I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, open your Bible. That's that's where that's where the feet that's where the food's at. That's where the man is at, right? Amen. Amen. Uh, let's start in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. I think this uh, this scripture right here will be a good starting foundation for us. We're yes. going to build a house here that 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 will support Everything that we talk about has got to be based on the scripture. I mean, that's the true foundation. And so Ephesians chapter 2 in verse 8, uh, would you like to read that, Shelby? Yes. Okay. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. That's right. Okay. Now. I think what? we need to keep going. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um would you like to go ahead and read verse 9? Yep. And Say, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then I discovered verse 10. Yes. All right. Okay. So, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. So, it's a gift, but yes. even the works, if it is any works, is also yes. a gift from well, God. It's almost a fruit. Yeah, you know, yeah. from being connected, uh, being connected to the vine, the true vine, Jesus. If if you are connected, uh, if you are if you are grafted into an apple tree, you don't have to work to produce apple. It's going to be spontaneous, Amen. right? Amen. And it kind of works the same way. Uh, it's through our faith, our connection, our faith connection with Jesus. We are automatically, if you've got real faith, you're going to produce works. Is right. that what he's saying right. here? But and it's going to be a fruit. Yeah. It's he, not going to yeah. be. He prepared it beforehand. Yeah. And I also like that it said, um, so you're by grace you're saved through faith and that, not yeah. of yourselves. The faith and the grace is not of yourselves. Yes, yes. that's so, what I wanted to bring yeah. out because, okay. you know, it's that first part is, is a very important thing because it's by grace. So it's not something that we have ourselves. Yes. It's a gift. It's given to us because, you know, our, our, uh, we should be dead, right. you know, because of sin. Mm -hmm. But it's because of the grace of Jesus. That's right. That we have the opportunity to even have faith. And so it's just a blessing that God yeah. it has bestowed that up on us. Okay. I love that. Both really good points here. Uh, what I got out of that. What can we learn here from Ephesians 2 8? What does it teach us? First off, that faith is a gift. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. Grace. It's, it's, we, it's not we even don't our faith. It. No, it's not we our don't faith. deserve it's, it. It's from God. Yeah, it's a yeah. gift. Yeah. Uh, it, and I think we're going to learn later that, that, it's, that it's from Jesus. Uh, yes. it, he's the source. 
Jesus is the it source of our faith. Right. It's, it's, it's the, can we just yeah. say the faith of Jesus? Right. He, he gives it to us. He imparts it to us as we are connected with him, as we, as we live by faith. And we're going to look a lot more into that. And as we live by faith, as we keep and as we maintain this personal connection, yes. abiding personal relationship with Jesus, we're going to produce the works well, that's that where, Wendy brought out. And that's where Wendy brought out in verse 10 because yeah. it's, it's his workmanship. That's right. Yes. That not he's, ours. He's doing in us. Yeah. So it's not even ours. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, the, the scripture says that our our righteousness is filthy dirty rags. rags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. filthy rags. Filthy That's rags. right. So, all right, this is good. Any <laughs> more? Amen. Any more thoughts on 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 Ephesians two eight? I think we got it covered pretty good. But yeah, okay. It's I got a gift. It. He gave it beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. So where do we get this kind of faith? I think we answered that. We get it from Jesus. Okay. So now, how do we grow our faith then? How how do we grow our faith? Well, okay, so I think faith is another word for trust. And if you're going to trust somebody, if, if they're trustworthy, and we know God is trustworthy, yes. right? How do you, like, say, how did you learn to trust your wife? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't know her, can you trust her? Absolutely not. So You've how do you get to... Spend time. I spend time. Very good, Wendy. Yeah. I love that. So if your faith is shaky... And I, and, I, and I think a lot of people out there, and I think we can be honest, a lot of people have went through things in their life. They've had, they've, they've had experiences that has caused their faith to be shaky. And so if their faith is shaky, what do they need to do? They, they don't need to run from God or just give up on God. They need to run to God. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's and right. Ephesians 1, uh, 13, chapter 1, 13 says, in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of mm-hmm. truth. Yes. Yeah. The gospel of sa- of your salvation. It's not yours. It's of your salvation. Yeah. In whom also after ye believe, ye were sealed with yes. that Holy Spirit. Amen. No promise. Yes. Amen. So, yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's not even ours, though. Yeah. So you um, learn to trust God through the gospel, and where yeah. do you find that? The word. Yeah. In yeah. the word, in right, the word, right here. In the word. Well, you know, uh, Romans ten seventeen. We 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 yes. all know that one. Faith, Faith. comes by hearing, hearing and, and hearing, and hearing, hearing the word of God. God. Mm-hmm. And and oh, yeah. I always like to bring up here: Jesus is the Word made flesh. Yes. So it, it's all about hanging out with Jesus. Yes. Is what it is. John chapter Spending one verse time. fourteen says, "And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us." Mm-hmm. So it really is all about spending time, spending time. with our best friend Jesus. No. Um, I, I do have something to say, because yeah. if your faith has ever been shaken, what do you do? And I've gone through that, and I wanted to believe. Yeah. And so I started searching for an answer, and I actually found evidence that um, it's it's really hard not to believe. It's past a statistical impossibility if you don't believe, you know, yeah. but I searched for that answer. And I, I think that sometimes you have to search, and the Bible says if you seek me, you will find me yeah. when you search for me with all your heart. That's in Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. Mm. And I think that God calls everyone. God draws everyone. Um, in um, John six forty four, the Bible says, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. Yes, yes. And in 1 Corinthians seven seventeen, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And um, the Bible also says, uh, he who began this good work and you will complete it. So I I think that God draws us all, but it's a choice to let him draw us. You know, when when we have a shaky faith, search and we'll find him. That's right. Yeah. Over and over, you see that in the Bible. And that's what I was going to say. You know, God does his part, but we also have a part to play. You know, right. and since Christ went back to heaven, he doesn't force anything upon us. Right. right. And so our part to play is when he draws us, we mm-hmm. also have to surrender. Right. Mm-hmm. And let follow him. Let him. him. Yes. Yeah. Don't you say know. no. Let him. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. If you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. James 4, 6 and 7 talks about that. Committing your life to the Lord. Submit to him. And, and the devil will flee. Will flee. This, which is where doubt comes from, right. by, by the way. Um I just want to make this one point before we go on to just simplify it, especially, you know, uh, I, I had an opportunity today to speak to to a school, of, uh, a, a grade school, mm-hmm. uh, younger kids, and I talked to them about faith and what faith was, and, yeah. and, and I brought up 
kind of illustrated what you were talking about, Wendy. It says, you know, about when, with Cindy, you know, did I, did I trust her at first when I, when I first met her? No, I couldn't because I didn't know her yet. And I asked him, I said, who's got a best friend? <laughs> and, you know, they all raised their hand. I said, well, the first day you met your best friend, could, did you trust your best friend? Did you have faith and confidence in your, in, well, no, because they didn't know yeah, each other. No. But after they spent time with each other at school, yeah. they spent time with each other, they developed yeah, a trust. Right. And because if somebody is trustworthy and, and you don't trust them yet, whose fault is it? Which well, possibly it's yours. your fault. Yeah, because because if somebody is one hundred percent trustworthy, you're just gonna have to get to spend enough time with them to be around them enough to where you realize that they are trustworthy and you can trust them. Yeah. And that's that's the way it is with Jesus. And, yeah. and so, again, I'll say, how do you spend time with God? Yeah. In the Word. In the Word. Yeah. And in prayer. In yeah. prayer. Yeah. That's, awesome. that, that, they were raising, I asked them that same question. They were raising their hand. They said, and they said, prayer, spending time in the yeah. Word. Uh, one little young man uh, named Otto says, he says, by following what God tells you to do. Yeah. And don't, don't that, don't that increase your faith? Because as you follow God, you see that He really does know what's best. Yeah. And uh, so, and also, you know, just uh, I had COVID not too long ago, and mm. you know that uh, built my faith because mm-hmm. you know Absolutely. just just almost being on death row basically because mm-hmm. I should have been in the hospital because I had pneumonia at the same oh, time. Oh wow! And so you know it was a battle, but through that I grew faith because I was at first I was depending upon myself and and doctors to do things. Yes. But I started getting in the word, and as I started getting in the word, I just relief and gave my life to christ mm-hmm. and just say lord whatever you want for me i'm here and if this if it's sleeping now i'll sleep yeah but if, if you have something for me to do i'm willing to go and uh you know just growing my faith and studying the word i just heard god that tells me that you know praying is not just falling on your knees praying is talking to me all day long that's right so now my relationship with god is not just Wait till nighttime or early in the morning. I talk with him all day long Amen. in every conversation. Amen. In doing that, realizing that God is with you always. He said, I will never forsake you nor leave you. That's so right. he's, he's here now. Absolutely. He's here when you're in the car driving. Yes. And if you change that mindset to where you know that he's not way over, over here, mm-hmm. he's here with you. That's right. In spirit and truth. And so in that, it changes your way of thinking about God. Yeah. And it builds your faith. That's because right. You know he's there. Amen, yeah. Shelby. Good points. I think that um, I, I experienced something similar when I had COVID. I think God draws near or or maybe the veil is thinner and we can feel that he's near when, when in suffering. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I think he's many there. times in trials, people go, where is God? He's he, right there. Right there. Never left. Yeah. yeah. Never he's left. right there. And it's a state of mind. You know, yeah. it's where do we believe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, growing up, I've always thought, well, he's just in heaven. But I mean, he said, I go that I may send you the Holy Spirit. Yes. That he will abide with you. Mm-hmm. And if he wants to put the Holy Spirit in you, that means he's here. That's right. He's, mm-hmm. he's not he way be, over there. He wants to be part yeah. of our life, doesn't he? Yes. And that yeah. grows your faith. Amen. That grows your faith. Amen. Exercising. So yes. our faith then, what I'm hearing it's from each one of you, is like if you, if I wanted to exercise my arms here to get bigger. Get some guns. I've got, I've, yeah, to get <laughs> yes, some shotguns here. I've got to, I've got to work out. I've got to exercise, or it's Amen. not going to happen. It's the same way. We've yes. got to exercise our faith muscle. Well, and yeah. I think God also practices with us, or practices us. I'm not sure how to say he, that. He, yeah. trains yeah. he trains yeah, us. Trains. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He trains us. He trains us. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. in boot camp for yeah. the Lord. Yeah, exactly. Is, is the way I see it. So we go through things yeah. to yeah. stretch all our right. faith. This is yeah. good discussion. Good discussion. <laughs> um, all right. Faith. Uh, real faith. Does faith, real faith, does it give us hope? Oh, I have a good one for this. Yeah. Good. Romans 4. Five, Good. one through five. Yeah. Romans five, one through five. Okay, so um, I'm... <sighs> I said five, one through five, because it's all so good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, can we'll I just it. read it? Go. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Go for it. The so, word therefore, having been justified by faith, so there's your faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which mm. we stand and rejoice in hope. There's mm-hmm. your hope of that glory of God. 
And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Here's our trials that Even train in tribulations. Us. Yes. Tri- that that's, train a, us. that's a good well, we point there, Wendy. I'm glad you brought that up because there's a lot of people, when they go through tribulations, they wonder, where's God? Why am I having yeah. to go through this? Yeah. yeah. And knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, mm-hmm. and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Wow. Yes. Now, hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay. All right. So that was that that was a pretty meaty (laughs) scripture that you just read there. In other words, God allows us to go through different trials, different tribulations. To train but, us. but but he he's 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 again he's, he's our trainer in he? yeah. he's, he's our coach. Yeah. That's what he's doing because he's wanting to grow our faith. So one thing that we can take a note of, God is always in the faith building business. Amen. He's always about Amen. growing our faith. Um and one thing I wanted to bring out, the word hope is not like I hope I'm gonna do this or I wish. It's is hope is a firm assurance. So the more you go through tribulation, the the stronger you feel, the the stronger your hope is in Jesus. Because when you overcome your tribulation, mm-hmm. is when you know He's there. That's because right. Because He will allow you to be broken to the point to where you know you can't do it yourself. Absolutely. And there has to be something else yes. that's pulling you through that. That's that firm assurance. So yes. the next time you go through a tribulation, yes, you know. I don't have to doubt it. He pulled me yeah. through this. He's going to pull me through again. Exactly. That's the hope that yes. we're talking about. Yes. So take note of this, friends. If you're going through a trial or tribulation right now, just think about what God... Because Satan likes to discourage you. He likes yes. to overwhelm you with all these trials, tribulations, and things like that to totally discourage you because he wants you to give up on Jesus. But what I want to encourage you to do to not, right now... What I want to challenge you to do is if if you're going through a hard time right now is take a moment and reflect back on what God has done for you in the past. Amen. And as you do that, the, the, the only thing that we've got to worry about the future is when we forget what God has done for us in the past. Yes. So you stand on those promises. That's the reason it's so good to journal. It's really good yeah. to journal uh, your, your, your life experiences and everything so you can reflect back on these things. And each time you're exercising your face muscles, you know that yes. God got me through this. He's going to get me through it again. Your faith grows stronger. Grows stronger. I, I have another verse just to nail it down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. James 1, 2, and 3. And that whole thing is great, but I'm just going to stick with 2 and 3. Amen. Uh, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Joy. Wow. Joy Even joy. Trials. Yeah. You read that right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And it goes on to say it completes us and it yes. gives us everything that we need. And so that was, the, you're reading out of James. That was James. Paul was the one that you were reading from earlier. Apparently these guys had lived Don't through enough experiences yes. that they learned from it, right? Right. They, 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 their faith grew stronger and they could pin this for us through the inspiration mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Because we need to hear things like this. Amen. Thank you, Wendy. Amen. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt that people right now are, uh, especially with everything going on in 2021, we had 2020, what a wreck, what yeah. a train wreck that yeah. was. And uh, there's a lot of people that are discouraged out there. There's a lot of people that are just ready to throw in the towel, just give up. Uh, I've heard I've heard that suicides yeah. are just uh, higher now than they've ever been because people are going through so much right now. Not knowing uh, how to handle it. Yeah. And so I, I want let's open up our Bible to, to Hebrews uh, chapter 10 in verse 35 because I want you to know, uh, yes, we're going through some hard times right now, but there was a people 2,000 years ago, the early church, and they were going through some pretty hard times yeah. themselves. They were discouraged. Uh, they, they were having doubts whether their Christianity was even real. Possibly there's somebody might be listening right now. You might be wondering, you know, is this real? I mean, is, 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 can I really trust the Bible? Can trust I God. really trust God to leading in my, in my life? Can I trust Him? I mean, that's really what this boils down to. Amen. Uh, and I want to read this. Hebrews. I want to read, I want to read um, Hebrews 10, 35 through 39. And I want to read it from the New Living Translation. I really like how this, 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 this says it right here, right. Hebrews ten thirty five through thirty nine. Now remember, this is a people 
just like we are going through difficult times. They're discouraged. Their faith is even getting a little shaky here because they're not seeing any. They're not seeing any answers like they want. You know, yeah. they're saying, "What's going on here? Can I really believe in in the Lord?" And this is what the word says. So do not Paul. Uh, Paul says this in Hebrews ten thirty five. Mm-hmm. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. In other words, don't give up on the Lord. Amen. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Amen. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. Yeah. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Amen. Friends, this is a powerful message from the Lord for us today. Don't give up on God. Jesus is almost here. It's not... It's not the time to give up. No, it's time it's, to hang on. Yeah, it's time to hang on and to press in. And like Wendy said, perseverance. Yeah. Seek God. Seek Him with your whole heart. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. When you seek God, you will find Him. Uh, that That is a promise that, that He gives us. Now, he, you yes, know, go, ahead. Since, go ahead. Since we're right there, yeah. um, there, there is an... Are we going to talk about the faith chapter? Yes, we're getting in there here uh, okay. just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, can I talk about yes, the end of the faith chapter? Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, sure you can. So Hebrews 11 talks about all these people who had so much faith that names yes. them. Mm-hmm. And then it gets to yeah. some unnamed, and we never talk about the end of the faith chapter, these unnamed yeah. people. Yeah. And it starts about verse 35. It's Hebrews mm-hmm. 11, verse 35. Okay. And it, it's kind of a discouraging thing, and sometimes people get discouraged, you know. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's a feeling. I don't think it's a discouraged feeling, you know, because yeah. they could have easily been discouraged. But look what happened to them, okay? So it talks about all of these people who had all this great faith, and then it says in verse thirty-five, in the middle, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still, others had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. Were their prayers answered? No, they were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin, goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They Mm. wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves. And all these, having attained a good testimony through faith. Wow. How? Through faith. faith. Through faith. They did not faith. receive the promise. That's says. right. They did not receive yeah. the promise. Yeah, absolutely. What a powerful point that they 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 just hung in there. They 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 just didn't give up. They hadn't received the promise, but in faith they claimed the promise. Yes. Yeah, that's a good I point. I mean they're in the faith chapter, they're among these giants of faith, yep. but they didn't receive the promise. Right. But they look forward in faith. Yeah. Yeah. And which is what we gotta do. Right? Right. We've gotta we've Amen. gotta do that. Got to stay strong, the, keep moving. Uh, yeah, Hebrews ten thirty eight says that the the just shall live. live how by the faith. group you're talking about? You got to live by faith. You can't live by sight. You can't. You can't. You cannot do that. You got to. You can't dwell on the things right here we're looking at. Yeah. We've got to look past that at the promises God gives us. Jesus is coming back. He's going to help us through whatever we've got to go through. I think yeah. the thing that was. Hmm, from a, going from a young Christian to okay, let's say a middle-aged Christian now. Yeah. Right. Okay. The thing that surprised me was that it's maybe not about getting your prayers answered. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you don't get that promise sometimes. Yeah. But you still have faith. Maybe you could be discouraged because your promise isn't answered, but you still have faith. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Wendy, that's a good point, and I want to just bring this up right now because that's the reason a lot of people are discouraged and walking away. From, walking away, and we're going to. I'm going to really address that question here even more in a minute. But we don't. The sooner we learn this, what this, what I'm going to make, the better your life's going to yeah. be. We don't. Our we don't pray to God just for answer prayers. We pray, and you nailed it a while ago, yeah. Shelby. Why did you start praying continuously? during the day instead of just at night or, or special times because i just know it was the, it was the lord for it's you a know, relationship just, just it's a relationship fun. we pray for the relationship yeah 
That's the reason we pray. We don't, we don't, we don't pray because just to get God. If, if the only reason you pray is to get what you want, you'll get discouraged and walk away. Our prayer is all about a relationship with God. And that's it's staying connected to Him. Yeah. And I believe that's the key to when you say prayer. I like to use the word talk. Talk, yeah. yeah. Because communicate. You know, talking when you're praying, you're still communicating. You you need to speak it out loud to make it happen. You can't just think things, you know. Yeah. But prayer is if you learn to talk with God all day, when you do get in hard times, when you do get in trial. He's there. You will listen. You will hear his voice. But we don't hear him when we in those hard times because we don't speak to him enough. Yes. So we don't even know what his voice sounds like. We don't know how to hear him. But yeah. he's constantly speaking to us even in those times. We just can't hear him because we haven't practiced to listen. So maybe in the suffering we sh we learn to be quiet. Yeah. We maybe just so. have to start listening. And maybe that's the reason God allows us to go through some things like that every once in a while too. That, that it says that he tests us, he yeah. trains us, he rebukes us for our chastening, mm -hmm. yeah. for us. Because he, he loves doesn't us. do it because he or he's mean. He does it because he, loves he us. wants us to communicate with him. Yes. And yeah. sometimes we go on through life to where we don't talk to him at all. Yeah. Until we wait till we get on hard times, mm -hmm. and then the first person we go to is him. Yeah. But I don't have a relationship with you because you haven't talked to me all yeah. week. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, uh, uh, we, we, um, we, you made a comment, Shelby. You said, you said, instead of calling it praying all the time, you call it talking to God. Yes. I want to carry it a step further and call it walking with God. Amen. Uh, and if yeah. you, if you, oh, we're going to get over in the faith chapter here, uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, and it talks about all the heroes of faith yes. and everything. And, and, and it talks, Two of my heroes of faith is Enoch and and also Noah. I mean Noah, it had never rained before. It had never rained before, right? Yeah. And and uh, and what what two what what thing did Noah and Enoch both have in common? They they, they both walked with God. Yeah. They, they walked with God. That's what yeah. it says. En and Enoch walked with God. And Noah Noah walked oh, with God. Yeah. That If you read, go back in Genesis and look at both of them, they both walked. They walked through their life. They spent time with him daily throughout yeah. their day. He was part of their, of their life there. So, and so how can we do that today? Good point. How can we walk with God mm -hmm. for, for our listeners? Okay, I've got a couple uh, notes here. One is uh, is that uh, what's what's maybe some of your favorite verses on faith? We want your input on this. This is a discussion on faith. What are some of your favorite verses on faith? Uh, and also, if you got any prayer requests, this would be a good time to go ahead and be thinking about them. We've got a God that's faithful uh, to hear and also to answer our prayers yes. in the way that's best for us. Yes. And then someone would like to read uh, a. a Scripture that meant a lot to someone here. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Who would like to read that? Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. This is one of my favorite scriptures here. Um, mm, yes. Because that's what real faith is. Real faith is not leaning on on our own understanding. Mm, that's true. But, but faith is relying on, on God. You got so that, Shelby? You got, would you like to read that, Shelby? Yes. This Hebrews... No, I mean and Proverbs. Proverbs. Five, yeah, Proverbs. Three, three, five, and six. Three, five, and six. Three, five, and six. Yeah. And the word says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Very good verse. I've got a just a note that I made here. Faith involves a conviction that God's word are true. And that his promises are sure. It's not waiting for some sensation or, or some event to take place, but yeah. daring just to take God completely at his word. Amen. Blindly. Yeah, and I was thinking there was something that we skipped that when we said the just shall live by faith. Yeah. It's a way of life. It's not an emotion. I had that yeah. wrote down too. Amen. Faith has I got to be a way of you. life. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's got to Amen. be a way of life. It, Amen. It's not an emotion. Which is so important, Wendy. It's not an emotion. It's it's got to be a way of life, 
It's got to be a new way of life. Trusting yeah. God to direct our paths, yeah. like that verse. Not leaning on our own understanding. No uh, not what. not leaning on that. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's it's totally taking God completely at His word and relying mm-hmm. completely on Him. So if you and I want to say this, if you want to see the miracles from God, you got to walk by faith. Mm-hmm. That's what you got to do. You got to live by faith if you want if you want to see the miracles from God. So now. I got, I got, a, I got another question here. Amen. Uh, what? And 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 it's back to really what I said earlier. What is real faith, and how does it work? And I think to answer that, I'd like to go to the very beginning of the faith chapter in Hebrews chapter eleven. Mm-hmm. Let's look at Hebrews chapter eleven and read verses one through three. Wendy, would you like to read that? Sure. Okay. So Hebrews eleven one through three. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So there's your hope again. Yep, yes. Mm-hmm. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Amen. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By what? Mm. By the word of God. By the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which were, are visible. So it okay. has this connection, the, the visible with the invisible. That's right. I, I get really excited when I read this scripture right here uh, because this is what real faith is all about. Amen. It, it, it's, 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 it's really that Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, whoever sent that in, that's a great scripture Amen. because it's not leaning on our own understanding. I mean, the Bible says here that real faith is believing that the world was formed by the Word of God and and. It was made out of something that, that, out, of that not out of nothing. In other words, yeah. God can made bring out something out of nothing. Right. So yeah. I'm thinking, what is your situation? You might think that you are in a in a, in between a rock and a hard place. You might think that you have got a humanly impossible situation going on. What in the world? How am I going to get through this? I want you to know, have faith in God because He can bring something out of nothing. He can. Well, He He formed the world out of darkness. Yes, that's right. And when you hear that, you think about just nothing. But sin is also that darkness that God can form a world out of Mm -hmm. and give you who? Give you life through that. Mm-hmm. And so that's that same darkness again, because darkness is just just a, a a best situation where your life is is so down that you don't have nowhere to go. You mm-hmm. you can't see something. That's why so many people committing suicide today. Yeah, mm. because they are in the abyss of darkness yeah. and they don't know how to get and, out. And they're looking at yes. darkness. Their focus is in darkness. They they turn the TV the, on and it's just d- discouragement and, and violence and. Uh, and, and and nothing nothing to look forward to whatsoever. Uh, and God is telling you today. I hope you hear God speaking through His Word here today. Is take your eyes off this all this negativity yeah. and all this confusion yeah. and yeah. put your eyes and your thoughts oh, on Me. Jesus oh, knows the way home, and uh, that's the reason it's so important to walk by faith because He knows the way home all all Amen. the way home. Now, I, I had something in my notes here substance now because i like to when i'm reading the scripture i like to really just look at those words there the wording in it because i think every word is is important since jesus is the word made flesh the substance of things hoped for what is that what is the substance of things hoped for it's 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 the real thing that you can hold yeah yeah Yeah. tangible yeah yes tangible the way I answer this to myself is that the substance is that is everything God gives us. Yeah. There is more, friends, there is more evidence that there is a God than there's evidence that there's not a God. Mm-hmm. When you look right? at it, you, yeah. really, I think about it. this. <laughs> yes, there is more evidence there's a God. God has given us so much evidence of His faithfulness. He, he, he just give God a chance. You start talking to him and walking with him in Amen. prayer and see if if if, if he, show he, will show he will show he up. He showed up in my life today. I wasn't planning on sharing this, <laughs> but uh I Amen. I lose things a lot. And and I lost and, and about a month ago, Cindy and I realized I lost my lawnmower keys. And I couldn't find them. And mm. she blamed it on me and I blamed it on her. Isn't that Amen. what we do? <laughs> and uh, I was convinced that she, <laughs> she put them somewhere. Yep. Uh, anyway, today, my grass is getting about six inches tall. <laughs> and I need, <laughs> and I, need to, I need to mow my yard. And, uh, and so I, I thought, mm. well, my keys. What about my keys? 
to my shed and my lawnmower. So I, I, I went to my bed, my place of prayer. That's my altar. Amen. And I knelt beside my prayer bed and I said, Lord, would you please, I don't know what I did with my keys. And I don't know what Cindy did with not <laughs> I, I, uh, and, uh, and I want you, as soon as I got up, I walked directly over to where I used to keep the keys at. And I said, well, that's where I keep them at. And I thought, could they have fell in a little hat that was right hanging in the same place? Really? And there my keys was. Great is that's his faithfulness. Right. That's God right. is so faithful. He did that that's for me. Right. And so that's that's what he wants us to do. He wants yeah. to show up. He gives us substance. He gives us a reason. You know, we're not. he's not asked us to believe in him in blind faith. He's mm-hmm. given us substance. Right. He's yeah. given us evidence. That he is real. Well, Scripture said, test and try me. He That's asked right. us to test it. Yeah. And so he wants us to, to put yeah. him to the test that he will answer our prayers. Uh, David, David says in Psalms 34, verse 8, he says, taste and see that the, that the Lord, Lord is, good. is good. I love I, that. I think this is so, an example okay, of what Etienne, you're yeah. Etienne. Etienne's normally sitting right here with us here. <laughs> Amen. He's, I think he's on his way to Nebraska right now. All right. Uh, Safe travels. Uh, this is what Etienne uh, shared real faith is a perfect union between human and divine. I love that thought at the end. That is great. That what what that is is when you have faith, you are connecting your life with Almighty God yes. through all things are possible. Divine with the humanity, even Very through good. things, yeah. substance yeah. such as keys. Wow, that is <laughs> even with keys. That's right, <laughs> even with keys. Yes. God is so good. Yeah. So now, uh, so. Faith then is not a feeling; it's not an emotion. It's real, right? It's real. So, it's what what are other things that faith is not? Faith is not. It's faith is not sin. Yeah, that's right. Whatever is faith is is whatever is not a faith. The Bible says is sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point because it's yeah, works. It's you're trying to do it in your own knowledge, your your own strength. The righteous shall live by faith. Mm-hmm. The just shall live by faith. So. Uh, Faith is like living your life like there really is a God. And I yeah. think, Shelby, you really brought this up a while ago. This is something that we've got to that that we that we've got to apply to our day to day life. To. And I, I'd like to just make a comment right here because because uh, this could be so confusing. Faith, uh, unless your feet, unless it hits your feet, it's not really faith. Yeah, you know what I'm saying here. Unless it's something that's going to change the way you walk and change the way you talk and change the way you live your life, it's really not faith. Because the just uh, live and walk by, by, by faith. 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 Yeah. And we know that that uh, that if you have real faith, you are going to produce the works of righteousness too. So it's going to change the way you you you, you, you live your life, the way you direct your life. Okay. So in other words, what you believe has got to change your life. Yeah. And it's yeah. not just to change it for the for the now. It's not to believe now and, and and you know a lot of times a lot of people they get on the well, I feel good now. I'm I'm feeling the emotion. I feel that God is with me so I have faith and oh, then we so true. and then we 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 quit spending time with him and then we start yeah. getting back out into the world. We start doing all these different things and and then we wonder how did we get out here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, we got out here because we left the Lord. That's we right. We left the we Word. We quit studying. Stop we quit spending time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know that song, "God on the Mountain" is still God in the Valley. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That song. How did we get in the valley? Because yeah. we were not. We wandered away. Well, yeah, right. We and every one of us, every one of us, do that. Yeah. We all have done it. Oh, that's but what you're, I'm that's a good point, yes. though, Shelby. You're absolutely he right. He reaches down so, in that valley and yeah. picks yeah. us up. But we get out there when we yeah. get busy or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here's a big question that I know that uh, that we we don't want to tiptoe around. We want to cover the whole Bible. Amen. So I got to ask this question: What do you say to someone who has lost faith in God because of unanswered prayers? Well, first, I have several things to say. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. First, I want to say I'm sorry because I've been there. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be. Mm-hmm. Um. I would say keep reading and keep praying. Yeah. But um, third, I would like to say you're in good company because yeah. the mm. apostles and the martyrs didn't yes. have have their prayers. That's answered, right. Yes. You know. Yes. Um. So I I have I I've struggled with this. Okay. I've struggled with not getting your prayers answered. Why do we? What do we have faith in if we don't get our prayers answered? Right. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, then I, I said, okay, what do we know? What do we know from the Bible? Okay, so we, we know if, if we're having faith in God, and, but our prayer is not answered. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going through something like somebody's sick. Somebody's yeah. dying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do we know? Yeah. Well, we know God is with us in it. That's right. The mm. the Bible says, mm. "I will never leave you nor forsake you." Shall be said Amen. that early. That's right. You know, yeah. That's Hebrews thirteen five. Amen. We also know God gives us strength mm-hmm. in it. Um, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And yeah. without God, all yeah. things. Well, with God, all things are possible. Without Jesus, nothing yeah, is nothing. possible. The third thing is, God, and I, I know that we never see this when we're going through it, but the Bible says all things work together for good to yeah. those who are called, yes, who love right. God and are called according to His He purpose. can and will bring good out of no matter what we're going through. And Amen. we don't always see that good because, because, you know, like, my mom died when I was two. How yeah. can that possibly be good? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're promised that God will work it out to a beautiful picture yeah. in the Amen. end. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, a scripture that you made me think about when, when you were talking about somebody getting sick, but, you know, get sick and dying, and we were yeah. praying. Listen to uh, Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 13, talking about all these heroes of faith, yes. all these people, you know, that, 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 that God was able to work through because they had faith. The reason we are talking about them, the, the thing that they have in common, all these people, Enoch, you know, uh, Noah, Abraham, all these heroes of faith, well, they, they, they had faith, yeah. but but then they did die. They, they died. Yeah, it no. says they, all these them, all amen. died in faith, amen. not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded to them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. I mean, yeah. I'm convinced from reading the Bible that the... Okay, can, can I just say it? The yes. closer you are to Jesus... Probably it from the evidence, the more you're going to suffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because he's going to make and war against a, and there's the a enemy. He's going to make war. So you know, yeah. with, with saying that, you have to understand that there's not just there's an adversary out there, right? Yeah, and that's Satan, and and he is to, wants to seek and destroy all of all of God's people who mm-hmm. his creation. Yeah, and we have to understand that Satan has so many things in this world to bombard us to take control of our minds. We got the Mm -hmm. TV, we got uh, friends, we got pictures, all these different things that we have to entertain us. Yes. Is focused on taking the mind. Mm -hmm. And if he can get the mind, he got you. Right. So if you look at it, Satan is fighting for your mind. Jesus is fighting for your mind. Mm -hmm. Which master are you going to lean to? Mm -hmm. But your mind is what everything is all about. It's all about controlling the mind. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't dwell on all that. Trust in the Lord and let Him direct your path. You know, talking about what do you do when when somebody is losing their faith because of unanswered prayers, what we want to challenge you today is, and this is we're using the Word of God to do it, is don't give up on God. The only hope you've got is Jesus Christ. The only hope. I love the the prophet Habakkuk in uh, chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vine, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Lord. I will joy in the Lord of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on the high hills. Uh, I just love that, that attitude that no matter what, Job said the same thing, though you may slay me, I'm still going to serve you. you. Yeah, I'm going to trust you. Now, can can we make it real? Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, okay, I know people, I've, I've had to pray for seven years before my nephew was delivered from prison. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, my own fiance lost somebody to cancer, and he had to scratch and claw his way back to God and think, yes. it is Amen. not easy. No. It is not easy. where the easy. rubber meets the road. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it will take you down and just well, flatten well, you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say this, you know, when you're going through these down times and these, these hard times, it's it's worse to be by yourself. Yeah. Because if you're by yourself, you're being attacked one on one with with Satan. It's better to try to find a friend or come to the church and, and fellowship with others because the church is a hospital for sinners for brokenness. And so you wouldn't be the only one in in that situation. 
I've lost a sister. I've lost my mom. I lost mm-hmm. my dad, you know, and I at, at the young age of five and seven. Yeah. And I grew up my life in that situation where I had to reach out to somebody else because I kept running toward the world, mm-hmm. trying to solve my own hurt, and my own pain. But when I gave my life to Christ and joined the church and started fellowshipping with other believers who's going through some of the same things, I was able to come back to God. Mm -hmm. And my faith has grown since then. And I just uh, just for anyone that's out there that may be going through that, that is the hope that you have. Don't do it by yourself. You're never alone. Yeah. At least it gives you hope. Yes. Where maybe there was none before. Amen. You know, those are good points that you that each one of you are making here in Thelma uh, sent in something. I got two two things. Thelma and Etienne has sent in another comment, and both of these fit with exactly what each one of you are saying here. Praise so I know God. the Holy Spirit is leading. Amen. Uh, we Thelma says we trust in the impossible that God will carry us through things we cannot see or understand. His love never fails, even though we might not understand can't while we're going it. through yeah. something. We can't see it mm-hmm. when we yeah. can't. When we can't understand his hand, we can trust his heart. You yeah. can trust God's heart. And FTM makes a point here. The foundation of faith is complete surrender of the will to God. It's just trusting God. I trust you through this. I know you're going to get me through this. It, it makes me think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, when, in Daniel chapter 3 when, when they, they were up against the, the fiery furnace. Amen. You know, Nebuchadnezzar was going to have them thrown in there. And, and they, they, they make the comment, you know, said that our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, but if not, yeah. in other words, no matter what, God, if, in other words, I serve you, God, not not for what you do for me, not because you answer everything you want, but because of who you, you are. are. Yes. Because I know yes. you love me. Because he and created us from yeah. nothing. That's because I know your plan yeah. for my life is eternal. And that's what we've all got to keep in mind. Friends, unless Jesus comes, we've all got to die. Every Amen. single one of us. But yeah. when we, but the Bible promises because that tomb is empty because <laughs> Jesus has defeated death, friends. Amen. That He's coming back to get us, and the dead in Christ shall Amen. rise. That's what the Bible says Amen. that we're going to rise up and be with Him forever. The promise. He says, "Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, in believe also in me. In uh, he, he's or many Amen. mansions. He's gone to prepare for us a place for us, and, and that He will come back and get us. That where He." that where we are, he, that we can be with, with him, him also. Amen. So, um, so what a promise. Could, these are promises that yes, we've got to hold fast to. Could we say that faith then is just trusting God no matter what happens? That's right, Wendy. That says it in a nutshell. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Trusting God no matter what. So Even if our prayers aren't answered, even if we die. Yes, absolutely. We don't give up. So uh, i tell you what, this has been a exciting Bible study. Amen. And I, I'm so there's glad so that both more. of you, I think this is a perfect team for this yeah, discussion so here. So much more digging yeah, in. There's so much more, but we're running out of time. Amen. I want to make sure that I give each one of you time to have a final thought. Something that as you've studied for this, as you prepare for this, Amen. something that made your heart burn, that you were impressed by the Holy Spirit that you need to share tonight. So we're going to let, if Wendy would like, I'll, I'll let you go first, Wendy. Okay. And then, and then after that, Shelby, you can share. Well, I have two thoughts. One comes from Hebrews 10, 19 to 23. This is my go-to. This always comforts me, no matter whether I feel I have faith or I don't. We know it's not yeah. a feeling. Um, this In verse 19, um, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest the holy, most holy place, mm-hmm. through the blood of Jesus. So we know that we're all covered by the blood of Jesus. So Amen. we all have this boldness to come to him, okay? And then by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. So because Amen. Jesus is there, because he's behind the veil, because we're covered in the blood, we have full assurance of faith. When I don't have faith, I have the faith of Jesus. That's right. That's I have full assurance of faith. Just I look claim this. Yes. I love that yes. point, Wendy, yeah, you, because it good. is about the faith of Jesus. Yes. It, it's when, when I'm struggling, when I'm weak, when I'm knocked down, when I'm discouraged, 
When I'm beat up, when I'm ready to throw in the towel, you all you've got to do is look to Jesus. Right. And he's right him. there. We he forever lives. Hebrews 7.25 says he forever lives to intercede for you. Yes. He's always there to help you. And and, and, he, and he, will, he will give you that faith, his faith, that you need to get you through whatever you're going through. I, I have one other, Mark 9.23-25. Right. The father who is praying for his son, and Jesus says, do you believe? And he says, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. That's right. Yes, that's right. And he will. Yes. He will. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. And, Shelby? And my final thought would be uh, Ephesians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, and verse 8. It says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and, the, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Yes. And what that is saying to me is that we are going to be rolling like we're on a boat mm -hmm. and waves are going to be tossing us back and forth, back and forth. And then you're going to feel like you're drunk going through life because Satan is going to be throwing darts at you, trying to get you to change your ways and not to be in Christ Jesus. But just remember, you have to gird up yourself, put on the breastplate, put on the armor of God. Yes. And in putting that armor on, which is the word of God, yeah. Yeah. your faith will automatically grow without you even trying to do it yourself. So give up doing it yourself. Yeah. Just study the word. God promised that he will give you the faith that you don't no long, that you don't have yourself. So it's not our faith. It comes from him and him only. And so that's what I uh, brought out of this. And that's what and in that faith you will automatically get salvation. And that's what I would like to leave with our listeners tonight. Okay. God does it. So, um, yes. let me recap what you just said in my heart, my mind, and what Wendy, because both of you are saying the same thing to me, and I think saying the same thing to somebody out there listening right now, maybe you don't have any confidence in your faith. You go, you want to you wanna have faith, but, but my faith is so shaky. Mm -hmm. I want to have faith. I want to believe, but all Amen. these doubts keep coming up. Yeah. What I hear both of you saying here, and I want you to confirm this because we got That's a little it. time here to do this, is that that um, our job is to look to Jesus, right? Because exactly. it's His faith. Yes, Only it's Jesus. His faith. It's the faith of faith Jesus. Of yes. Jesus. It's not. It's yes. not. He, he's it's not, not going to leave all this salvation to us. No, because we would definitely it. fall one way. Because my, remember, my yes. faith would definitely falter. Yes. It's got to be the faith of Jesus yes. as I look to him. This could be a game changer and a life changer for yes. somebody out there that's been struggling this for a long time. It's mm -hmm. Jesus' faith. It's right. His. And, he, is and he wants to give it to you. That's yeah, it. it's a gift from God. Mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians 2 8 again. So, and that's what we have to stand on because even in our churches, for the people that may not be in the church that may be listening right now, yeah. even our churches, the reason people falling in and out of church is because they are doing it themselves. Yeah. And they are trying to make it to heaven on their own accord. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we need to remember that it is the faith of Jesus. Yes. And the only way we get salvation is we eat the little book, eat the word. Yeah. And the Jesus. more we stay in the word, we don't have to change anything. God will automatically change it for yes. us. Yes. Yeah. Amen. That's what I would like to leave. I Amen. love that. <laughs> So that, that's what Paul was saying when, hey, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Uh, the gospel is, is not a, anything in our doing. I need to boast. It's not no. me doing anything but trusting completely in, in Jesus, Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on the cross that's of it. Calvary to wash away my past. And, and, and his, in his, not only his, what he did on Calvary, but what he's doing for us right yeah. now. Every he's, day. He's forever lives to intercede Every for day. us. Yes. Uh, you brought yes. that up, Wendy. Also, Psalms 20, 121, he forever lives to help us. He's yes. our helper. He lives to help us at all times. We so, his children. Yeah, that's right. You know, he created us. Yeah. He didn't create us to leave us. He created Beautiful. us to train us and teach us yeah. you know, because he loves us. Yeah, because he loves us. He, he would do it all. He would fix all the problems. Yeah. But can I say, why doesn't he? Because if he fixed all the problems, then no, the universe would not see how bad sin is. That's right. Amen. And so it's a witness. Our suffering is a witness of how bad sin is so that it yeah. is wiped out forever. Yeah. And also, Wendy, I mean, I have to say it. Uh, when I'm going through trials and stuff, 
it seems like I'm a lot more sensitive to God's voice. I'm sure <laughs> seeking a lot more. Amen. When we're you down know, there, we look at yeah. yeah. when, yeah. when things are too good. Sometimes, sometimes the thing that God blesses us with causes us to separate from Him because we we yeah. stay focused on it instead of Him. And so that's, that's true. Um, well, all right, I got to I got to share my wrap up here because Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Only got five minutes left. Amen. This is so important, though. This is so important. As I was looking through Hebrews chapter 11, at all the heroes of faith. I mean, these are the yes. heroes of faith yes. here. They're in the a hallmark of fame of faith right here. But when I'm looking through this right here, and, and I look, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I see something pretty important. A lot of these folks right here in Hebrews chapter 11, if I had been making up the list, maybe some of the rest of us, they, they wouldn't be it. on there. Amen. They, they wouldn't be in that list. Right. No. I mean, there's drunks. Drunks. Oh, yes. Yeah. There's liars. Murderers. There's murderers. A prostitute. Yeah. This has got to be some good news for somebody besides me. Amen. It gives me some hope, yes. and I'm sure it gives you some hope. I don't care Amen. what your life is. I don't care what you've done in the past, no matter what it is. Right now, friends. If you look to Jesus, isn't that what we learned That's tonight? Look to Jesus. Is your faith shaky? Do you feel like that you you just went too far or there's no hope for you? There is hope, friends. Look to Jesus right now. Look to His blood will cover your past. Yes. It's not what you did. Mm -hmm. It's what He did. He did. It's, and it's the gift He wants to give you. All you've got to do is turn to Him right now That's it. and start living your life by faith. Now, what is living your life by faith? It's by relying on God. For spending not leaning time. on your own understanding. Spending it's spending time. time with Him. It's praying to Him. It's staying connected to Him. It's trusting in Him to save you. Not yeah. trusting in yourself because you can't do it. It's trusting 100% in Him. And so. I like to say too, just I know you wrap it up, yep. but even most of the time, even when you don't feel it, yes. you don't feel God's presence, you don't feel like reading, you don't yeah. feel like this. Read anyway. Yes. That's right. Because through temperance, we actually get saved through that. And I think that's what he's he's telling us. Why we, when you're saying we don't mm -hmm. feel like it, you you don't lean on your I mean, understanding your feelings. Yeah, I was in Faith the world. Faith is not a feeling. I did. I was in the world. I did yeah. drugs. I did the drinking. Yes. And and just leaning on Jesus alone is the reason why I'm here today, Amen. serving Him. Amen. Just keep reading. Keep praying. Powerful Bible study yes. tonight. Okay, we got some. Uh, we got some prayer requests, praise reports. Praise Amen. God, Etienne made it safely, safely Amen. there. Thank praise you, the Jesus. Lord okay. in Nebraska. Uh, pray for Miss Thelma. Pray for her daughter. She tested positive for COVID. Yes, Amen. pray for Miss Thelma's daughter. Uh, and then we got a request. Carolyn's former pastor and his daughter with COVID got two COVIDs two here, back to back here. And then we have some unspoken prayer requests. Oh, now I have one. Okay, yes. my parents are moving south okay to driving today and stacy's right. driving and, north driving okay. back today so we need to oh. lift up your parents and lift up stacy for travels Amen. okay um i tell you what we got we got three minutes why don't we all have a little short prayer okay if you go first wendy and then shelby and then i'll close this in prayer and i've got do i have one more uh pray uh hannah mucker uh we want to pray for hannah's and her family, uh, Ruby, a very dear uh, friend of ours, uh, uh, died here. And we want to keep all of Ruby and the whole family lifted up in prayer. Amen. So we love y'all. So, yeah, go ahead, Wendy, you go first. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you've done and for the faith that you've given us, that it's it's all you. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. We just claim that. Uh, we we claim what you have done for us. We agree. We accept we invite you in. We give you permission to work in our lives and do this for us. We thank you for this. We also ask you for these prayer requests um, for the safe travel of my family and um, for those who have COVID. We know that you draw near to those who are suffering and we ask you for their healing. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. 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 Father God, I just want to give you praise. I want to give you thanks for being here tonight. Lord, we know that you was here with us. We understand the truth that we understood tonight that came from you. We know that faith only comes from you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Father, you have already heard the prayer request that's been lifted up tonight. And so, Father, I ask you to just work on these as your will and the way you see fit, Lord. And I ask that you will just bless those uh, who's going through death and who's suffering right now, Lord. 
we know that you can just send the angels to wrap their arms around them and, and give them comfort right now mm -hmm. and be with the sick, uh, with the COVID, uh, the COVID patients. Lord, you know we've had it, and I know that you can heal. Yes. You are a healer. Yes. And so, Lord, we just ask for your healing powers right now with the suffering of this world. And this we pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I agree with these prayers. And all those out there that are listening right now, that's going to be listening, I pray, dear God, that they would hear you speak to their heart, that all they've got to do is turn their eyes upon you, that everything they need, their faith, uh, their repentance, uh, the new life, the vic victory, uh, be an overcomer, everything that they need is found in you. And so please pour out your spirit upon everyone that's watching and listening, Lord, and draw them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us tonight. I told you it's going to be a good Bible study. <laughs> Amen. Tell a friend. You can still share this and, and invite friends to watch this. There's people that really need to hear this message. God bless you. Bye-bye.